So here today we're deploying 100 floating sensors in uh, the uh, Georgian SLU and what we're testing with this is we're testing a new way to gather very accurate information about the flows in rivers. So um, this is a prototype of the um, uh, motorized uh, unit we're using. What it's doing, it's basically tracking um, the currents and it can uh, propel itself with these little propellers you can see here and it can communicate with us through uh, wireless, um, through radios um, and through smartphone which is uh, inside the device. All the data is basically inserted in hydrodynamic models uh, so it can reconstruct the river flow as the river is flowing through the junction. And uh, typically what you can see here is the water flowing and then you can see these red dots here are specifically uh, floaters like this uh, that gather data. And what's very interesting is you can see now the river is slowing down and the river is actually reverting so this sky will probably flow to the other side of the junction. This is information which cannot be collected otherwise. In other words, uh, today there's probably one sensor here, one sensor here, one sensor here, but these do not provide enough information uh, to understand what's happening in this region of the Delta. This project has been uh, uh, hosted at Citrus uh, at UC Berkeley and what it does is it basically assembles a consortium of uh, agencies and companies that have uh, interest in this technology. So for example, T-Mobile donated phones which are equipping these passive units here uh, and the Department of Water Resources, the National Science Foundation that funded the fundamental research that leads to the hydrodynamic models that populate uh, the system to understand how water is going and also on the algorithms that basically uh, enable us to inter insert data inside the models. My name is Andrew Tinka. I'm an electrical engineering student at UC Berkeley. Uh, today we are doing an experiment with 100 floating sensors in the Sacramento River and Georgiana Slough at Walnut Grove in California. So we have 100 of these floating sensor models. Some of them are an active model like the one I'm showing you here and some of them are a passive model, like this one. The way the floating sensor technology works is that we throw these sensors into the water and they float on the surface of the water and are carried by the river. So they act as tracers. They go where the water goes at the speed that the water is moving. They have GPS on board and they radio their positions back to us, allowing us to reconstruct the flow of the water in the delta. This is very important to help researchers understand issues like the movement of contaminants in the delta, the movement of salt water in the delta, and environmental factors which affect fish migration and other environmental issues. The floating sensors transmit their location live to our servers, and those servers put the locations on a map. So the green dots that you see on this map are live updates of the location of our servers. Right now, most of them are clustered on the dock, in a few minutes, we're going to go throw them all into the river and let them be carried away. The dots down here are fixed relay stations that will help with the communications out on the water. This screen allows us to track the location of our floating sensors in real time, allowing us to recover them and also to get a sense of how they're distributed in the channels that we're interested in measuring. So, here we go. What we're going to do is we're going to wait a little while uh -huh. for, the, um, for the yellow drifters to make their way under the bridge. Yeah. We'll actually give a, a fairly good time separation. We'll try for about 10 minutes. Uh, and then we'll throw the passive sensors in using a, using a more spaced out arrangement. It's a